Looking at latent heat and specific latent heat, you should already know what we mean by specific and what we mean is one kilogram. So when we talk about specific heat capacity, when we talk about specific latent heat, we're talking about the energy around one kilogram energy required to do something with one kilogram of something. That's what the specific means. So let's look then at some key terms. Latent. What we mean by latent is hidden. The word generally means hidden. A latent talent is one that's there but can't be seen. So latent means hidden. So this is about hidden heat. And it happens around materials, substances melting or solidifying, boiling or condensing. So what is happening with melting? Well, melting is the breaking of the strong bonds. between uh, atoms or molecules. In a solid, that's what melting is. And of course, it could be the forming of those. That's what solidifying is. So melting and solidifying is about breaking or forming strong bonds between atoms and molecules. Whereas boiling or condensing is about moving the molecules or atoms further apart into a gas or closer together. Now there are weak bonds between atoms or molecules in a gas, sorry, in a liquid. Uh, and in an ideal gas, in a perfect gas, there, there are no forces at all between the molecules except when they collide. So you are breaking weak bonds here, but primarily you are moving those molecules further apart or in condensing, you're bringing them closer together. So the specific latent heat of fusion, the symbol for that is a capital L with a little f subscript. This happens or is associated with melting or solidifying. So it is the energy required to completely convert one kilogram of a substance, material, at its melting point from solid to liquid without change in temperature. So key points one kilogram from solid to liquid at its melting point without change in temperature. So that's the energy required to move from solid to liquid. If you go the other way, if you have your liquid at the melting point and it condenses into a solid, it solidifies, sorry, into a solid, then the energy that you put in to go that way gets released. So the specific latent heat of fusion is the energy you have to put in to convert something at its melting point, one kilogram of substance at its melting point, from solid to liquid without changing the temperature. It is also the energy that you will get back out if you have liquid 
at its melting point and it condenses, sorry, solidifies into a solid without change in temperature, you will get that same amount of energy out. Vaporization, well, this is L subscript V and that is the energy required to completely convert one kilogram of substance at its boiling point. So I just realized that uh, positive shouldn't be there. At its boiling point, from liquid to gas without change in temperature. And again, if you take one kilogram of water, pure water at 100 degrees C, you have to supply energy to that to convert that water, which is boiling, into steam. And the energy required is the specific latent heat of vaporization. Going the other way, if you had one kilogram of steam at 100 degrees, then as it condenses, I'm using that correctly this time, as it condenses from gas to liquid, the energy you put in to drive it into the gas comes back out. So while we talk about fusion and vaporization, this is the energy required to break the bonds, but also the energy released when the bonds are made. This is the energy required to move those molecules further apart and to break those weak bonds. But it is also the energy released when the molecules move closer together and those weak bonds are formed again. So breaking bonds requires energy. Making bonds releases energy. You might know that from your work in chemistry. So these are our sort of key terms that we're looking at here. Okay. So moving on from that then. Let's explain what's going on with latent heat. So the first thing I think we need to be clear about is what do we mean by temperature? Well, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of your molecules or your atoms in your substance. That is what temperature is. So if you are not changing the average kinetic energy, you're not changing the temperature. Now, if we go back to what we said about melting, solidifying, condensing, vaporizing, this was about forming or breaking bonds. This wasn't about making the molecules travel any faster or slower. So the making and breaking of bonds, the moving of molecules close together or further apart, this has got nothing to do with kinetic energy. And so when you're doing those things, making bonds, breaking bonds, moving molecules close together, further apart, this doesn't change the temperature. And that's why the energy that comes in or is put in to cause your solid to melt or your liquid to boil, because it isn't changing the kinetic energy, it's doing something else, the temperature doesn't change, which is why on the face of it, the heat seems to be hidden because you expect when you heat something, it's gonna get hotter, but it doesn't in these cases. So because temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy, Melting, solidifying, 
boiling, condensing. Involve making or breaking bonds, that's kind of the wrong way around because this is about breaking bonds and this is about breaking weak bonds and moving them further apart. This is about making bonds and this is about making weak bonds and moving them closer together. So we are making breaking bonds and in the liquid to gas, gas to liquid transition, we are changing the distance between the molecules. We are not changing the average kinetic energy. So we're not changing the temperature. Now, going back to those definitions, you should have noticed, I pointed it out to you very clearly, that those definitions include the condition no change in temperature. Because what you want to know here is the minimum amount of energy required or released during that change. And if you change the temperature, then you change that minimum. So, no change in temperature is crucial to these definitions and therefore no change to the average kinetic energy. All we're doing is making or breaking bonds, moving molecules closer apart, further together. So that's the explanation of latent heat. It is energy that is going in to break bonds or coming out when bonds are formed. It is the energy going in to move molecules further apart or it is coming back out when those molecules move closer together. This is all about conservation of energy, remember. Um, if you think about supplying the energy to the water to make the steam, so you've got your uh, beaker of water, and the beaker of water, which is boiling, becomes not the scale, the cloud of steam. You put energy in, which I will call a change in energy, Q. When it goes the other way, from steam back to boiling water, let's say, for example, the steam is now condensing on your hand, the first thing that it will do as it condenses is to give up exactly the same amount of energy you gave it to make it into steam. And then, of course, it will cool down So there are two parts to the cooling, to the condensing and cooling of the steam. One is condensing from steam to boiling water, and the other is cooling from boiling water to ambient temperature, room temperature water. So <clears throat> hopefully that explains why latent heat is latent. Let's then look at the equation. So you'll be familiar with the specific heat capacity equation. So the energy required to change one kilogram of solid at its melting point into liquid without change of temperature would be the latent heat of fusion, the specific latent heat of fusion. If you had two kilograms, you'd need twice that much. If you had n kilograms, you'd need that much. So that is the equation for latent heat of fusion. And you have exactly the same equation, of course, with a different constant. If you're converting one kilogram of liquid 
at its boiling point into gas without change of temperature. So there's your two equations. So let's take an example. Let's take uh, 0 0.5 kilograms of water at 20 degrees C. heated until it is all steam at 100 degrees C. So, there are two stages to this, of course. First stage, we go from 20 degrees C to 100 degrees C. And that, of course, is a change in temperature of 80 degrees C. And the energy required there would be the mass of the water times the specific heat capacity of water times the change in temperature. Now, the specific heat capacity is 4,200 joules per kilogram degree C, note the units. So we go 0 0.5 times 4200 times 80. So that's 40 times 4200, which is 42,000 times 4 which is 168,000 joules. 168,000 joules. Capital J, or if you want, lowercase word. The second stage then is our 0 0.5 kilos to steam. So here we have the energy required is the mass times the latent heat of vaporization. And that, the latent heat of vaporization of water, is 2260 kilojoules per kilogram. Notice the units are different because. Latent heat does not involve a change in temperature. So there's no degree C term in the units. So here we have 0 0.5 times 2260,000, because that's kilojoules. So that's 1130,000. So the total then is one six eight thousand plus one one three zero thousand, which is one two nine eight zero 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 thousand joules. So one point two nine eight megajoules.